The evolution of vertebrate life on our planet contains many incredible and significant events in the history of its development. From the time the first backboned creatures made it onto land, to the rise and fall of the mighty non-avian dinosaurs, and then the numerous mammalian radiations that occurred afterwards in the Cenozoic. But the limitations of our planet's fossil record means that at some points there are gaps in our understanding of the past. Millions of years of evolutionary history are missing, and we are only able to make educated inferences about what took place in those times. And sometimes these gaps occur in frustratingly important places. One of these missing pieces of the puzzle is the so-called Roma's Gap. This stretches from the very end of the Devonian period, 360 million years ago, for 15 million years until about 345 million years ago in the first part of the Carboniferous period. Annoyingly for those of us interested in the history of vertebrate evolution, our own evolution, this is a key time in life's past. Roma's gap seemingly obscures the transition from the shallow water and swamp living tetrapods that were using their limbs to pull themselves along river and lake beds and manoeuvre through dense underwater vegetation in the late Devonian, to the fully land living tetrapods with terrestrially adapted limbs that existed later in the Carboniferous. This gap was first identified by Alfred Roma, an American paleontologist who was fascinated by vertebrate evolution and developed the basis for our modern understanding of the taxonomic relationships of these various backboned groups to one another. In his writings about his research into vertebrate origins in the 1950s, he explained how no satisfactory intermediates between the Devonian tetrapods and the ones known from later on in the Carboniferous had yet been found. A key gap in our record of vertebrate history that would later come to be named after him by other paleontologists who investigated this problem. So why was there a gap at this point in time? Well, a couple of different ideas were suggested in the past to explain this fascinating mystery. The idea that a global decrease in atmospheric oxygen levels towards the end of the Devonian caused this gap was one of these suggestions, argued for in a paper published by researchers in 2006. This study explains that by tracking the atmospheric oxygen levels at this time in Earth's past, an explanation for the rise, disappearance and resurgence of tetrapods can be obtained. The hypothesis goes that high oxygen levels in the mid and late Devonian were one of the driving factors in the success of the tetrapods, with such a high concentration enabling these animals to breathe the air more easily instead of getting the oxygen from the water. As such, the tetrapods and also various arthropods were able to start breathing out of the water and could start exploiting the new terrestrial niches available to them. But then, the argument goes, lower levels of atmospheric oxygen at the start of the Carboniferous coincided with Roma's gap and would have made conditions unfavourable to air-breathing animals, resulting in a much lower diversity and abundance of tetrapods during this time. Then, when oxygen levels increased again later on in the Carboniferous, the tetrapods struck back and began filling more terrestrial niches. Therefore, by this argument, Roma's gap is a real phenomenon that represents a bottleneck in the evolution of vertebrate animals, and not, as the other argument suggests, simply the result of poor sampling from this point in time. But there are some issues with the oxygen levels idea. Firstly, it turns out that there's conflicting evidence with regards to the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere across Roma's gap. The levels of oxygen were actually not significantly lower during the gap when compared to particular other times in Earth's history, especially in the late Devonian when atmospheric oxygen levels were even lower than in the gap. Plus there's the fact that marine waters would have had lower concentrations of oxygen than the atmosphere, so if anything, there would have been even more of a reason for organisms such as the tetrapods to exploit terrestrial habitats. This means that levels of oxygen in the atmosphere likely does not explain the phenomenon of Roma's gap. And then there's the other, even more damning evidence against this argument. As it turns out, Roma's gap probably never even existed. As I just mentioned, the alternative explanation for the gap was that the missing record is not a true biological signal, but instead a result of sampling bias. This means that fossils from this point in time simply hadn't been found, either because the sedimentary rock record from the environments the tetrapods lived in at that time just wasn't suitable to preserve fossils, or because we hadn't yet looked in the right places. Well, recent discoveries made in the last two decades have completely changed our view of Roma's Gap. This missing part of the history of life on Earth is starting to be filled in, with all kinds of wonderful new finds showing that tetrapod diversity was not particularly diminished in this time, and that really we'd just not been looking in the right places. The closing of Roma's Gap began with studies such as the 2002 naming and description of the Carboniferous tetrapod Pederpes by the hugely influential English paleontologist Jenny Clack. This was, at the time, the only fully articulated tetrapod skeleton from the first stage of the Carboniferous, a stage known as the Tornasian, to be described, and represented the start of a bridge across the gap. 
Pederpes came from a site in Scotland and was functionally pentadactyl, meaning it had five functional digits on each limb, as opposed to the tetrapods from the Devonian that had more than five functional digits per limb, and lived towards the end of the gap, becoming the earliest known tetrapod at that time to show signs of terrestrial locomotion. For a long time, only two sites in the world were known to have produced tetrapod remains from the Tornasian, the locality from which Pederpes was recovered in Scotland, and another in Nova Scotia, Canada, where many isolated bones from tetrapods living in Roma's Gap had been found, but not identified with complete certainty. But then in 2012 came the announcement that a whole series of other sites in Scotland had been located, and were producing many different tetrapods that lived during the Tornasian. The gap had been bridged. All kinds of diverse tetrapod fauna were recovered from these various sites across Scotland, with both terrestrial and aquatic forms being described, and several new taxa identified and then later named in another publication a few years after. Such a diverse assemblage of these animals from the Tornasian stage clearly show that Roma's Gap was indeed the result of collection failure, and not actually a real event that was the result of oxygen level changes. Additionally, this relatively high diversity of early tetrapods found just after the end of the Devonian seems to indicate that these earliest ancestors of ours recovered quite quickly from the end of Devonian mass extinctions. Indeed, another study that had looked at patterns of diversity at and after the end of the Devonian had hypothesized that Roma's gap may have represented a lull in diversity after the devastation of the extinction events, but the filling of the gap also seems to disprove this explanation. Then, in 2015, more work was done on the site in Nova Scotia, a locality known as Blue Beach, that represents a deposit dating back to the early Tornasian at the base of Roma's Gap. More intensive collecting of the locality was done, and then a paper was published that described in much more detail many of the isolated tetrapod bones, actually managing to broadly classify them by comparing them to more complete remains of early tetrapods known from elsewhere. Yet again, this more thorough analysis of a locality from within Roma's Gap demonstrated that a diverse assemblage of tetrapods was present here, with evidence for both large and small bodied taxa. The paper explains how this once again proves that when localities from the right time are identified and properly analysed, a rich diversity of tetrapods from the Gap will be shown to have been living at this point, meaning the Gap didn't really exist. Additionally, the Blue Beach site also preserves some very interesting evidence that certain tetrapods weren't even particularly severely affected by the end Devonian extinctions. Some fragmentary bone elements show many morphological similarities with taxa that are otherwise only known from the late Devonian, suggesting that these animals potentially survived the devastation at the end of the period relatively unaffected. More research continues to be done on the Blue Beach locality, with a very interesting study from May of 2021 that examines the microstructure of the tetrapod bones from this site, finding that many of these animals were actually still fully aquatic, despite the presence of trackways at Blue Beach that appeared to have been made by terrestrial organisms. The paper found that a highly diverse faunal assemblage of aquatic tetrapods was present here, and that the trackways supposedly made by land-living tetrapods were probably instead the result of these aquatic tetrapods using their limbs to pull themselves along the substrate underwater, and then this substrate becoming aerially exposed later on, though they do also accept the possibility that actual terrestrial vertebrates made them, the bones of which haven't been found yet. Studies such as these continue to help to refine the known records of the time represented by Roma's Gap showing that early on in the Tornasian, tetrapods seem to have still been primarily aquatic, whilst slightly later on in this stage, at times represented by the Scottish localities, there was a diverse assemblage of both aquatic and terrestrial tetrapods. Then, by the next stage of the Carboniferous, the tetrapods had truly conquered the land. Roma's Gap is a fascinating story of scientific discovery. Here was a problem, a gap in the known fossil record at an integral part in the history of life. Hypotheses were formed about what could have caused this missing chunk of evolutionary history, and then they were tested when new discoveries from the right sequences of rock were made, and one of these hypotheses, that it was down to poor sampling, was proven to be correct. Plus, it's pretty incredible that we can predict where we'll find such organisms. It's once again more proof of evolution that we can say, here's when there should be fossils from this certain group of animals, but we don't have any, so let's start looking in the right places. And then you find them. It's a brilliant success story for research into tetrapod origins, and I have no doubt that future remarkable discoveries from these Scottish and Canadian sites, and hopefully more yet to be found sites, will reveal much more about this time in Earth's history. Roma's gap has at last been explained. Well, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned something new. Thank you again for all the support you've been showing us recently with our new Bonerheads project, we've really been enjoying making them for you. And we've got some great videos planned for you this year, including the rest of our South Africa series. Things have been very busy recently as I'm currently in my final year of university, but don't worry, there are many more videos coming. 
Anyway, a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters, Amanda Von Nordek, Archianthus, Clara Middleton, Daniel Ingraham, Dhruv Srivastava, Gary Arrington, Giotist, Greg Silvernail, Corey Peterson, Loxy Poo, Mendicant Friar, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Nicole Bueno, Persian Boy, Ralph Balzac, Robert Thomas, and Steve Bradshaw. If you'd like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.